Glad to have you with us here on the program. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, joined by financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation and stay tuned. They have a special offer for you. They'll tell you how you can get registered for one of their upcoming educational events. These are great ways for you to get ready for retirement. And boy, there's a lot to get ready for in a modern retirement. I want to give you the phone number as we get things rolling here on the show. You can register right now, 800-240-8981. And keep the website handy, retirementplanningedu.com. Kirk Paul, it's great to be back with you. You know, when we look at the stock market and we look at the economy, I think it's really tempting to look at one or the other and think that if one is up, the other must be up. Or conversely, if one's down, the other one must be in the basement. Is that the right way to look at this? Well, Megan, I think there is, a, a, there has been confusion that the, the confusion between the stock market and the economy, right? And they are different. And we've never seen this more clearer than we're seeing it now, where clearly the economy, there's some things going on that are hurting and impacting people, right? But the stock market certainly doesn't reflect that. And I think Paul and I have been saying this for years, and I, not, I shouldn't say Paul and I, people have been trying to explain this for years, that the stock market really is, f is supposed to be a forward indicating signal, right? It's so if your market's up, it's suggesting that the future economy is going to be good, right? But still, when we have a pandemic, so many millions of people on unemployment, people are hurting, the whole economy shut down, but we see the market rallying to all time highs. It doesn't, the dots don't always connect for people. You know, Kirk, it's, it's interesting. I saw this graph the other day, where it showed 2001, 2007, and now, and it showed unemployment in the stock market. And as you would expect, 2001, 2007, 8, unemployment w went up, stock market went down, and, they, and as the unemployment rate started going down, stock market started going up. Sure. Same exact 2008. Now you go to 2020, initially is that way, now they're both at their peak. And, it, and I think it does create confusion. I, th this is why I think this is important show because I, it, it, it historically, the stock market has always been a leading indicator economically. And, and now it's like, is it really? Is it not? What's going on? I think this is a great show to help people try to understand what's going on. Yeah, Paul, I think it is too, because I'm not sure it is a great leading indicator right now. And people get tired of hearing this, how this time may be different, it, <laughs> but it, it really may be different. I mean, there really is good justification and rationalization for why the market is at an all-time high right now. But I'm not sure that fully suggests that our economy is headed for a full recovery. I don't know that that's what it's saying. I think there can be a, a, a very good argument this time that that may not be the case. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I think, you know, there are, some people would argue structurally there's some big changes going on. With the Federal Reserve, we're going to talk a little bit about it, about who's buying and who's selling. About, I mean, there's so much to this t topic. We could probably spend days talking about it, but I think it's a little unclear. I think there are a lot of people are scratching their heads now. What I worry about, I'd, I forget all the academics. I don't care. I worry about people who are listening, who are right now thinking, I'm going to put all my money in the market. And those same people who want to retire the next several years, I worry about them. I, I am too, Paul, because some people think it's this easy. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's a lot of do it yourselfers over the last eight years that have made a lot of money and think they've been successful. And one of the things that we help people to better understand is you may have made money, mm -hmm. but everyone made money. You could have thrown out a dart, a dart at the wall and made money. Mm -hmm. Like, right. So were you really that successful or were you fortunate and a bit lucky because everyone's making money? And so this is why we've had a great expansion. How long is this going to last? And what does that mean to all of these baby boomers retiring? And are you prepared for what is to come? And do you have a retirement plan? And I'm going to say most people don't. And it's why we teach these classes. They're seven-hour classes at all the major universities. But during COVID, we are now streaming them live so people can be in their own homes watching the seven-hour course, going through this 200-page textbook. Tuition is $29 to attend. And proceeds go to charity. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. Actually, you know, Kirk, this is, it's, this is an amazing topic. I'm driving here today, 
and I get a phone call from a client who got a phone call from her sibling saying, I think you need to invest a lot of money in a pharmaceutical company who we think is going to create a vaccine. This is this happened 20 minutes ago, right? <laughs> okay. And she's calling me because she's a client. She knows better. I, I, I don't want to talk about our, our business, but right. she knows better. But she wanted us to check this out. And we're talking about a lot of money. And she's like, they think they're going to make a big, right? There are a lot of people out here. I guarantee there are people who are listening who are doing this. They have all the time in the world. They're working at home. There's no entertainment out there. And they're doing this. And I, and I worry about this. Well, yeah, it's become a bit of a hobby for people, so, particularly people who gamble a little bit. They, yeah. They, right? And, and right now, it's, it's really not hard to make money in the market right this second. But I just I'm worried because the segment who are list of the population that's listening to us, the segment that that client friend is obviously older. And, it, and it's something I say every single show. Buffett said it right. If you have what you need, you have to be insane. Wait, this, the, the, let me rephrase it. You have to be insane to risk something you have for something you don't need. In other words, you won. If you have enough for retirement, what are you doing? We're trying to hit it big. Well, that, well actually, that hit was my big question at this to point her. In her life, right? I mean, how, how much you're willing to bet to do this? And and if you bet a little, is it really going to make a difference in your life? No. You're already, you're already, as you say, won the race. You have won, right? right? So right. it goes back to something we spent a lot of time in our class teaching. In addition to teaching how to construct your own retirement, when do you take income from which account at what age? How do you minimize taxes? How do you reduce something called sequence of return risk? We talk about all that, but the other component of the class that is more subtle, but probably the most important is the psychological. Your relationship with money has to evolve. You have to try to transition from serving money to allowing money to serve you. You may not understand what that means yet, but we explain it pretty clearly in the class and show you example after example where all of you are still serving money and not letting money serve them. So please attend one of our seven-hour courses. We teach them at all the universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Oakland University. We used to teach at Wayne. We will probably start back up again soon. But since COVID, we're also streaming these classes. We're doing small groups with uh, social distancing and streaming it through the computer so you can stay in your home. It's $29 to attend and tuition goes to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad you're with us here on the show. If you'd like to get registered for one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming classes. These are classes that are held at local universities. They're also bringing the class to you in the comfort of your own home virtually. You can get registered. Again, just call 800-240-8981. And it's really easy to register online. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. If you're on Facebook, like I am, you'll want to make sure that you follow Kirk and Paul at Retirement Education Foundation. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation so you can be in the know for everything that Kirk and Paul are doing. We're talking about the economy and the stock market. One and the same, right? Well, Kirk and Paul say, maybe not so much. Let's talk about some of the reasons why there is this great divide, this big chasm between what we see in the markets and what we see the economy doing, Kirk and Paul. It's a great word. Isn't that a great word, Megan? I love that word. <laughs> so there is, and maybe we can put some, make some sense of why the market is in an all-time high when we have so many headwinds economically uh, right now. And, and uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the Fed action, right? The amount of stimulus that the government has sent out to everybody and the injection of money, the Fed, through quantitative easing, programs to help specific industries survive, navigate through this. It's, it's a PPP program. All of these have created so much liquidity in the markets and really household incomes are up during this very difficult time because what is it 60 per 65 percent of the people on unemployment is are generating have generated more income while they were on employment than they were making when they were working so it, it's one of the reasons why we see the market at an all-time high retail sales are actually up right Paul I mean it's 
is pretty remarkable what's happening. It is. And I, the word remarkable, it's, it's, it's both remarkable I, and unsustainable. I, I, I'm a little concerned about I, I mean, I'm con- I think we're, there's a lot of people concerned a little bit about what the Fed is doing. It's working. Right. One of the things the Fed has done recently that has been hugely powerful, one can argue maybe not a good idea is, I mean, they're basically buying all this a lot of corporate debt that they've never done before. They're buying. So you have all these companies that are struggling that were significantly over leveraged. They people companies have been buying and buying and buying and have huge debt. Sure. And those companies are a huge risk. So what the feds are doing now is they're buying a lot of this debt and not allowing some of these companies, we talked about zombie to companies fail. before, yeah. to fail. And and they're so, you know, that's a huge that's a change. That's a huge change they've never done before. And we could argue whether that's a good idea, if it's not a good idea, but again, when companies are about to fail and the Fed step in, I mean, they're backstopping a lot of stuff right now. Well, it also, you know, I'm concerned about what what precedent are they setting and what behavior exactly? F- how so? I don't know. When when you when you own a company and you have someone that says we're you not going to let you, you can't fail. fail. Uh, won't we take on greater risk? And have they we, are. Haven't we seen this and record play before? It, it, haven't we seen this this movie? We have seen this movie, and and we know this now because companies now are are, are taking on more and more debt because they know the feds aren't going to let them well, fail. Well, h- how do you stay competitive, right? Right. If if, if company A is going to do it, yeah. then company B, I got to take on lever. I got to right. lever up. That's I, right. That's right. right. So I got to grow. I, that's right. I, I could take more risk. Right. I have someone that's going to prevent us from failing. The, the other thing we're seeing, Paul, with the amount of stimulus and liquidity in the system is I think we're seeing, I think it's five years of e-commerce that has been pulled forward over a three or four month period. So think about the amount of things we're buying on the internet now, whether it's our groceries, anything housing related. We didn't want to leave our homes. So we started buying everything through the internet. This this e-commerce, it's this pull forward of these sales um, and doing it through the intranet is another driver to these a lot. And it's also disproportionately impacting different companies on the stock market because we know, yes, the market's at an all-time high, but there's only a few companies that are driving the market to be at an all-time high. And it's all seemed to be centered around this e-commerce, this tech movement that almost had to happen given the, the, the pandemic we have. Right. Right. No, it, it's I mean, we'll give some data to to, to support what you're saying. But it, in some ways, you know, there's, you know, the Internet and e-commerce is exploding. And obviously those companies related to it are doing great. Sadly, a lot of companies that are are dying out there are just not represented in, in the stock market. And, and we could talk about that. But so, you know, yeah, the That's stock market is doing great, but there's a lot of people truly suffering out there. I guarantee you there are people who are listening right now who are saying, great, the stock market's doing well. I'm dying here, right? I don't have a for job, sure. for sure. And it's, so it's it's very, it's confusing and, and it causes mixed messages to people. So, and we're going to talk about this in the show, but but think about all the different risks that are within the next six months, right? And so I just think, you know, people get on a sugar high, seeing the market at an all-time high. They're all expert traders. Can I just propose one thing, Paul? If you don't know what percentage of the S&P 500 is energy or tech or healthcare, if you don't know that basic question, you're not qualified to be investing your own money at this point in your life. I mean, maybe when you're young, you could take some, but really you're this close to retirement and you're, you don't, you can't tell me that the S and P five hundred only has is is repre- the energy only represents three percent of the S and P five hundred. If you don't know that, are you qualified to be investing? Aren't you just sort of gambling? Let's just be honest. Isn't this just go to Vegas, get your fix, and you don't have to be the smartest man in the room. Look, just remember this: this is the first time, or woman in the room, I should say, person in the room. But remember, this will be the first time that you ever design, implement and manage your money at this phase of your life. This will be the first and only time you've done this, right? I, I say, We say this in the class. If you need to have surgery tomorrow, are you going to the surgeon that's, this is the first time they've ever done surgery? 
No, you're going to go to the one that's done it thousands of times. So why in the world are you going to do this yourself for the first time, at the most vulnerable stage of your life when cognitively things are going to change? And this is why we teach our class, because we've done it thousands of times and we can help you avoid so many mistakes that you otherwise would stumble into because this is the first time you're doing it. So please register for one of our seven hour courses. We teach them at all the major universities. We're teaching them in small groups right now with social distancing and mask wearing, or we're going to stream it live to you in your own home. It's seven hours, 200-page textbook. It's $29 to attend, and the tuition goes to charity. Please go to register. Go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're not following them on Facebook, be sure to search for Retirement Education Foundation. Click follow and you'll be up to date with all that Kirk and Paul are doing, which is a lot right now, helping to get you to and through retirement. And they do that with courses that they teach throughout the year. You can get registered today, 800-240-8981 or online, retirementplanningedu.com. We're talking about this division, this chasm, as we talked about, between Wall Street and the economy and how they're really different. They don't always mirror each other. And, you know, Kirk and Paul, I've heard a lot about retail investors getting in the market. What's that all about? And does that contribute to any of this? Well, it does. And candidly, I think we really wanted to talk about it because it's really something we're concerned about, particularly with look 10,000 baby boomers retiring a day with a lot of wealth and coming out of the longest bull run in history. Right. I mean, so it's sort of the perfect storm for people to get a little overconfident and make mistakes. And with the time, with the economy shut down, people working from home, no sports, uh, gambling shut down. It has driven a lot of people for fun as almost a hobby into being a trader, right? Opening up Robinhood accounts or Schwab accounts and, and trading themselves. And it always starts, it always seems to start the same way, Paul. It starts with people getting in and with a little bit of money because they don't, they don't, they don't, they're risk adverse. They want to take their time and try to learn this. And they have a little bit of success, which they've had. They've probably had a lot of success really quickly. The market is moving up just in general more rapidly than we've seen maybe in history. Unprecedented swings. And the swings are often to the upside. And people have been making a lot of money, Paul. Or let me rephrase. We've seen a lot of upward movement in the markets. And again, people started with a little bit of money. And got really excited. And Paul, from a psychological perspective, what does that do to someone? They invest a little money. They make a good call. It goes up. They keep seeing it go up. What A, what does that do to them from a psychological perspective? And what behavior is to follow? Well, we're hardwired with this, right? So it's, it's like an addiction. It's like taking, I hate to say it, it's like taking a drug and immediately feeling good. It's positively reinforcing. And and that positive reinforcement makes you want to do it more and more and more. And the more you win, the more you want to do it. And we're seeing it, right? So if we just give some numbers, right? Right now, retail investors make up about 25% of the stock market. It was about 10% in 2019. <laughs> and, and you know, one of the things that I, you know, I saw this chart recently. One of the things I worry about is if you, if you chart retail investors, and you chart institutional investors, we see an opposite trend. So what's happening is, right, retail investors are, are like going gangbusters in the stock market. And what are institutional investors? They're actually pulling. They're not. Right. They're pulling they're back. Pull, and, and, and to me, it's usually a smart point. money is where I, where I would bet on. on yeah. And they're the ones who really, if anybody knows what's going on, they do. And, and But I think, as you said, I love that. What do they call it now? Entertainment investing yeah right i really think people are people are bored they are they got, you know and, and the problem and, is paul go i'm sorry and, I was just saying, and, and also people aren't spending money so people have a little extra cash they do in their pockets right and where else are they going to put it they're not making money in the banks bonds they don't make i mean 
So it's a different discussion. We're going to talk about bonds are not making money. So stocks are maybe the worst, best thing for people. And that's what people are doing. And they're having fun. And they're having fun. They're making some money. That's right. And they get overconfident. And then they're willing to put more and more and more. And then the trap happens. Right. right? Look, look, it's not – it's a common signal. I mean institutional money, institutional managers like us, we laugh, right? When your Uber driver, your plumber, your – doctor is telling you how much money they made in the market and everyone's telling you know investing going to this retail is when institutional money starts to sell pull back and usually we see a pretty significant correction after that scares the retail investor to death then they go to cash and then the cycle starts again right i'm going to encourage everybody to google something called the dunning kruger effect the dunning kruger effect this really helps to describe our behavior, just about anything we start to learn about, right? But it really is applicable when you think about investors, when people are starting to try, and let's not call them investors, they're traders, an investor buy and hold for long times. Traders, do-it-yourself traders, it's really Google the Dunning-Kruger effect and then try to be self-reflective and say, is this me? And you'll see the trend of what happens. There's an overconfidence. And I said it last segment. Again, if you can't tell me what percentage of the S&P 500 is tech or healthcare, you're not qualified to be managing your retirement. And you're going to say to me, I'm not managing my retirement. I'm just playing. Yes. But like any drug, like any addiction, if in Paul's background, by the way, is psychology. If anyone's wondering why I threw it to him about a psychological question, but it's just common sense. When you start to do something well, you like it, and you're going to do more and more. And this is the trap that we have seen, not just this generation. We've seen generations past where people begin to start to think they've got this figured out, invest, and they don't realize there's no do-over once you're retired. There's no, oops, I made a mistake. Let me go back to work. No, it's you and only you that is going to pay you for the rest of your life. So you better be careful. Kirk, you said something that we that I think you said quickly, but I want to go back to, which was this comment about, right, you know, this is, at, at the end of the day, you, you may think you put aside a little bit of money and you can have fun. The problem is, okay, you set aside a little bit of money and you have fun and you and you win, you hit a home run. Before you know it, you want to put a little bit more in and a little bit more in and a little bit more. And before you knew it, you're gambling way more than you could afford. If you're 30 years old, we're not talking to you. If you're 20 years old, we're not talking to you. We're talking about people who are, you know, five to 10 years from retirement. This is not the time you want to play games. No, not, not with the market at all time high, right. unemployment where it's at, the Fed spending, QE forever, taxes are likely going to go up. Who knows what's going to happen with this election and what that means? COVID isn't done. Right. There's still too many unanswered questions coming out of the greatest expansion we've had in history. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's be let's be realistic about this. And so this is why we teach the class that show you how you might be able to still play a little bit if you want to play. But more importantly, how do you create a foundational plan mapping out your income for the rest of your life to make sure you don't outlive your money? Right. So it's seven hours at all the major universities. All of them we teach it, but we're also teaching small groups right now. And if you're uncomfortable going to a small group, we're streaming them live in your own home. So you can still attend the seven hour course, get the 200 page textbook. It's $29 tuition that goes to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800 240 8981. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can get registered for one of their upcoming courses by going online, retirementplanningedu.com, or call to register, 800-240-8981. And next time you're on Facebook, be sure to follow Retirement Education Foundation so you can stay updated on all that Kirk and Paul are doing to help you get retirement ready. Kirk and Paul, we're talking about this divide between the markets and the economy. And I want to ask you about, you know, we keep hearing that the stock market's at an all-time high, which is pretty incredible given all that's going on. Does that mean all stocks are seeing just tremendous success right now? Megan, I, it's it's such a good question, and I'm glad you asked because I, I think that this is another point of confusion. So here's the number. 
it's about six. We'll call it six to eight percent of all the stocks are at an all time high. The rest, so let's call it six percent. Six percent at all time highs. That the rest of all the stocks on average are twenty percent below its all time high. Which let's just translate, Paul. That means there are a very few number of stocks that are driving our markets to an all time high. This sort of goes back to that. That, that pull forward of all that e-commerce that's happening and technology and Zoom. And it's the big ones, Paul. It's the the Apples, the Tesla. I mean, these huge companies that are pulling the entire market up, some, you know, this goes back to our point. Instead of trying to pick winners and losers, if you if you own the index, you're there, right? You're So I just think people think the whole market is at an all-time high, and it's not. No, no, it's not. In fact, not close. Not even close. In fact, in fact, I think what's what's confusing to people is they look around and they see all these businesses shutting down and people aren't employed and how can the stock market do so well? But when you look at, for example, the S&P, which is the index that we typically think of as a benchmark, and you look at the sectors of the economy that are getting hit the hardest, entertainment, right, restaurants, hotels, resorts, cruise ships, energy, right, you, you, right, you look at those sectors and those are the sectors that are getting killed, right, in this economy and you look at how much do they make up of the S&P? It's a tiny, tiny fraction. Restaurants, I think 1.2%, right? 1.2%. Yeah, yeah. You say energy, 3%, I think, right? Yeah. Airlines, less than 1%, 0.4%, right? Retail, the most, still only 6%. We look at information technology, you just said this, yeah. 23%, right? right? So the part of this great divide, the, the parts of the economy that are getting killed, where a lot of people work, yeah. Right. Yeah. They don't represent the S and P. I know it's really it's sort of sad. The other piece of that is you know the, the stock market versus the real economy, and you know si- what is it? Sixty percent of jobs are driven. A little over sixty percent of right. all jobs are from small business owners in small businesses. They're not publicly traded. They're not. Pu- they're, <laughs> right. right. And so while the markets is right. booming, you know. <sighs> so can, can I just say one thing? Yeah. So the question is: So if I'm listening to this, I'm saying, okay. So what you're basically saying then is. The stock market is somewhat insulated from the economy. Here's the problem. All those people in those sectors that are getting crushed, that aren't necessarily represented in the, in the stock market, they're the ones who are consuming. They're the ones, right, who ultimately have to do things. Right. And at some point, at some point, the federal government and the Federal Reserve cannot continue this forever. And at some point, this is going to trickle down into all these other sectors, right? I, they they have to. to. They have to. It has to. It has to. Yeah. So, you know, and this goes back to something, you know, Paul, unemployment, they, they still haven't extended it. So that's going to come to a head. Um, will they do another form of stimulus through tax cuts or direct deposits as they did before? I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I, I know they're, they're they need to. I, I think they need to. I mean, and to what extent is the debate? And they're so divided that. No one wants to give the other party any sort of win or credit, so they're doing nothing. And we, the people, are are getting hurt for it. And and I'm not going to blame any one party. And anyone who does, I think, is is fooling themselves. It's this is both parties who are, you know, just playing a a, a, a Russian roulette game with us, the American people, and it's really unfortunate and dangerous. And you know, for some people, it's a false sense of security watching the the markets. You know, it, it, Paul, it, you 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 threw a statistic down. Paul did some research for for the show, and I, I just stumbled across this. This is just remarkable to me. It says in 2007, the Fed balance sheet was six yes, percent, the size of the entire national economy. By the year end, by this year end, it will be about forty percent. That is a remarkable number. So anyone, by the way, who doesn't think taxes are going to go up, you're fooling yourself, right? I just think it is right now you've got a window of time before the end of all of this. You almost have a reset. People have an opportunity to get off the sugar high, right, and stop being overconfident about where you're at for retirement and recognize there are some risks, some serious risks on the horizon. You're going to enter a very vulnerable stage of your life, and please don't be foolish enough to think you've got this figured out. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm telling you, you don't. And I, I don't know what else do we have to do to shake people. What, how, what harm is there to go to a seven-hour course 
at one of the universities or or stream sit in your home if you're worried about covid sit in your home and what it's seven hours of education on how to do this and i'm telling you the, the majority of the people who attend our course it's amazing it's those who are already very educated four or five years post high school educations most everyone has a bachelor's attending the course they don't need to be they don't need to be I, everyone needs this i don't know if they just value education greater than others I don't know why it's the professionals who are attending our course, the engineers, the CEOs, the CFOs, the CPAs. That's who's attending our course. Intimidated. Maybe people are intimidated. It, it, that, well, that's my point. That's why I'm saying it. Mm-hmm. You, though, everybody needs this. This is a new phase of your life that our industry totally ignores. And they ignore this in phase of your life because it requires much more complex planning. There is not a one-size-fits-all solution Unlike when you're young, it really is one size fits all. Just make money, grow your money. It's different now. Too many different variables. And and Paul, this is why people really need to take this opportunity to go to our seven hour class. It's at we teach it at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, Oakland University. We teach it right in Livonia at our learning center. We're teaching these in small groups where we can social distance ten to twelve people in the class at the same time of those live classes. We are streaming it so you can interact, have questions and dialogue, so you can be in your own home and watch the course. We send the 200-page textbook to you in your home if you don't want to come to the small groups. It's only $29, and it goes to charity. Your tuition goes to charity. There's no excuse not to take this course, Paul. Register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800 240 Eight nine eight one. Much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Always a pleasure to be alongside financial educators, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Give them a follow on Facebook. Next time you're logged on, all you have to do is search for Retirement Education Foundation. You'll be in touch with them. They can be in touch with you. And you can find out what they're doing to help you get more confident about retirement. One of the things they offer all year long is a course that you can register for. And this is a great download of information. This is not an hour long course. You'll want to block off some time. These are seven to eight hour courses designed to give you all you need to know to get ready for retirement. Register today at retirementplanningedu.com or you can call 800-240-8981. The stock market and the economy, do they go together? Are they mirrors of one another? Well, Kirk and Paul say no. So as we've been talking about this, some of the challenges with seeing the market drop or the economy improve or vice versa, what do we do in light of these challenges? What kind of tools do we have as soon-to-be retirees to get ready? Well, you know, I think we've spent some time talking about how how frothy the the stock market is, overvalued, right? We're seeing multiples that are are pretty high and historically speaking when we've seen a multiple at what is it, 23 times, the S&P is 23 t- times right now. We've seen a a follow the the following 5 years a uh, flat or a negative return. It, it it doesn't bode well for the next 5 years. Different story for 10 to 20 years, a little better for 10, much better for 20, but the next five years, and that's what we worry about. See, your greatest vulnerability is early in your retirement years when you're taking withdrawals to live on out of your investments. And if they're flat or down, the chances of you outliving your money increase by 75%. And historically, Paul, this is why our industry has promoted something called the 60-40 playbook, right, where we want to have... Only 60% of our money in stocks and 40% in bonds. Some will argue to reverse that, that you should have 60% in bonds and 40% in stocks. And the purpose, the reason why this has been so critical for retirees in the past is what they've been trying to do is reduce that volatility early in the retirement years to eliminate something called sequence of return risk. That is, sequence of return risk is the single biggest risk to your retirement plan, and that's why you got to come to our class. You've got to learn about this because when you take your income and how you take your income is going to determine whether you outlive your money or not and your performance throughout retirement. So the problem you all have now is bonds. Bonds is still the old playbook. That 64 playbook is still out there. 
and we have bonds at a historically low interest rate. We call it the war on seniors and savers, Paul. Paul, 50% of all developed countries right now have a negative interest rates. So how are you going to make money in bonds if we're at an all-time low? And when bond interest rates go up, the value of your bonds that you own, the value go down. I don't think people understand that, but this is one of the most risky times. It probably is going to be the riskiest time in history the next 10 to 20 years to own bonds. You better know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you know, where interest rates are right now, it, it's hard to imagine. It's really hard to imagine how we're here and how we're going to stay here. But to be honest, part of the reason why, again, the market's at an all-time high is because the feds have dropped interest rates so low. Money is so cheap out there that people can buy new cars and, and re, you know buy new homes because interest rates are so low. And people, we all love it, but what we don't realize is for seniors, it's horrible Part because obviously you can't park the money in the banks because you're not making anything, but also because if you're that 60, 40, you know, if, that, if that's your portfolio, you're not making any money in your bonds. And in fact, you have a significant risk in the future in those bonds. I, I, you, you said something globally. And if I can just say one quick thing, you made, you made this comment. Yeah, please. I read this recently. Austria recently put out a bond, a hundred year bond, a hundred year <laughs> bond, Kirk. With interest rate less than 1%. That's the world we're living in right now. Yeah, that reminds me of Germany right now. You, If you lend Germany, the government, a million dollars, if you right. lend them a million dollars for 10 years today, after 10 years, they'll give you $950,000 back. Right. It's a negative right. interest rate environment. A hundred year bond at one, you want to lock less that in? Less than 1%. Less than 1%. You want to lock and, that in and right that's, now? And that's good. That's that's the world of you bonds want, right now. I know. That's a that's a, 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 a negative real return. I know. With I know. inflation, you you can't retire on that. It's no. not going to work. So then the question is? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The, the question is, where do you go? And unfortunately, right. our industry, who just refuses to not be transactional, right? Everything is built on scale and meet as many you people as they can. You don't mean refuse to be transactional. They are transactional. They, they refuse to change from right. being, thank you. They refuse from cha- changing. Their, re- their un- unwillingness to compromise some profits to actually spend some time to build comprehensive plans, right? Because it takes time. I, in our private practice, when we construct a plan for a client, that's why we can only help about 40% of the people that want our help. It takes us 20 to 50 hours to build that plan. Our industry refuses to do that. They need simplicity, scalable, one-size-fits-all solutions. And and it's scary because I'm starting to hear some of the big, loud voices, the loudest voices in our industry that do the most publicity, marketing on TV, the so-called experts. They're now promoting a 75-25 playbook because they recognize bonds are, isn't going to work for retirees. You're going to lose money. Many people are going to lose money in their bond funds over the next 10 to 20 years. And it's no, you can't, they can't drive any yield. Interest rates go up, they're going to lose money. And so they are, and I want to talk about this next back segment, come back, because I'm really worried that they are, they're promoting people to try to drive up returns to keep up with people's desire in retirement into a 75% stock equity portfolio, 25% bonds. So they're increasing the risk because the bonds won't perform. And the, and the reason they're doing this, Paul, is because when they back test this, when they use those Monte Carlo simulations and they let their clients know that probability of success report that they give people, the 60-40 playbook is going to fail if they take 4% a year out, almost 25% of the time. So by driving up the equity holdings when they back test it, it shows a better outcome, more likely to succeed, easier to sell. And that is so dangerous. And we're going to talk about the next segment is the more appropriate way to manage that in retirement for planning. So come to the class. You learn all about how to construct today's, in today's environment, construct a retirement plan so you don't outlive your money and do it most efficiently with the best performance. It's a seven-hour course. We're teaching at all the major universities During COVID, we are now doing small groups so we can social distance, and we're also streaming it live in the class so you can be in your home watching with your 200-page textbook and following along. Tuition is $29, and that goes to charity. So if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. 
back right after this. Glad to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and we're really glad you're spending some time with us here on the program. If you log on to Facebook now and again, make sure you're following Kirk and Paul. Simply search for Retirement Education Foundation to get updates on all they're doing to help you become more confident about your retirement future. You can also register for one of their upcoming courses by going to retirementplanningedu.com or calling 800-240-8981. On the show today, Kirk and Paul have told us there is a great divide between the stock market and the economy. They don't always mirror each other. So when you look at that, some of those differences, what do we do? Is there a new playbook we should all be working from as we try to plan successfully for a 21st century retirement? Well, we would definitely argue there's a new playbook that needs to be utilized. Unfortunately, I'm not sure the the, the adjusted playbook we're starting to hear more regularly in the uh, in the media, in in the uh, magazine, money magazines, and in articles that you'll read today is the right playbook, right? So historically, our industry has used um, a asset allocation of 60% stocks, 40% bonds, or some who are more conservative would take a 60% bond, 40% equity allocation approach to retirement planning. And the reason they've done this is so that they had a greater allocation towards bonds, which over the last 30, 40 years have been less volatile than stocks, and it would allow us to be more strategic when taking income out of our our investments in retirement to reduce the chances of outliving our money. That's the whole theory behind it. And that strategy is no longer working. We have the lowest interest rate environment we've ever had, and it's been for an extended period of time, and it's wrecking havoc on all the, the, the software uh, stress testing, back testing tools that they're using now to construct these 30-minute retirement plans that they're doing for people. Really just uh, probability of success. And, they're, and they keep failing based upon that 60-40 model. And so they've been forced to evolve to what they're calling now is a 75% allocations to stocks, 25% bonds. And the reason they've done this they would argue is because bonds are going to perform so poorly over the next 10 to 20 years that to on, the only way that we can drive enough income in retirement and returns in retirement to sustain that income would be to take more risk in the stock market, which is insane to me. I mean, we've been doing this a long time. That is not the appropriate allocation for a retiree. We know what sequence of return risk does. And I, again, would encourage everyone to Google that sequence of return risk. And look at all the research that all the academia has done on sequence of return risk. It's the single biggest risk to your retirement plan. So this is why we spend, and we have for the last 10 years, spent, Paul, seven hours teaching how to construct a retirement plan, when to take income from which accounts at what age, so to minimize taxes, reduce sequence of return risk, so that we don't outlive our money. Paul, why is our industry so insistent on not doing planning what is the problem wow that's a that's a loaded question i, I mean know. you know as you're talking i'm thinking to myself you know it goes back to this this saying if all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail right part of the problem I is i mean part of the problem is you know if you talk to most advisors out there the only tools they have in their toolbox is the stock market that's it right that's you know they, they that's that's what they have Some of these are good people, but that's the only tools they can go to. And if the only tools you can go to are those, the stock market, then all you can do is tweak up or down a little bit how much stocks, how much bonds, right? And and I think you said it. People realize, given where bonds are at, people will not be able to generate enough income by putting more money in a bond. So if that's what you have, if that's the only tool you have, what else are they going to do? In our class, there are a lot of other reasons. There are a lot of other reasons. I, I, I mean- Greed. I can see. We, we, there's there's tons of reasons. Time. It takes time our to. Industry, right, our, yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of time to plan. Right. It takes. You know, if if they can see a hundred people, we can see one person. Obviously, they're gonna. You know, and the the, the idea is it's very transactional. Right. It's a transactional sure. model. There are a ton of reasons for it. I was I was trying to be a little nice about the whole thing. I know you're looking at me like, come on, Paul. Let's be real. At the end of the day, to be honest with you, at the end of the day, you and I know that that playbook doesn't work. Right. And we for sure know 
A 75-25 playbook is even worse. Oh, no. It's worse, right? We know that. So those people who are listening at the end of the day are going to sit around saying, great, so what playbook is there? And at the end of the day, the, really, it is about planning. And if you want to know about what playbook to find, come to our class. I mean, at the end of the day, we teach. That's what we do. We teach people what other tools in the toolbox are, are out there for you to create the retirement plan you want. If you want to figure out better tools, you got to get educated. You well, learn. I, Paul, I think I want to make sure, and we don't say this much, I guess, during our radio show. Our radio show is all about education. I hope you guys recognize we don't talk about our personal practice. The class is not a just a lead generator for our business. That's not our uh, – in our class, we're going to teach you how to construct a plan. And if you aren't able to do that, the last thing we do in the class is to teach you how to find an advisor to help you. But we teach you to find the right kind of advisor with the right credentials, with the right background. We teach you how to do background checks – and then we teach you how to know how to real they, plan, what a real plan looks what like. What is a real right? What should I be looking for? What are the questions I should be asking people? We give you all of that information. How do they get paid for those services? That's the tools that the class is trying to provide you. Honestly, we can only help about forty percent of the people who want our help. So, even if you wanted our help, we still aren't going to be able to help everyone. So, we're trying to give people the ability to know how to construct a plan, what a plan looks like, and or where to find somebody to help them. Because the conventional advisor out there is not that accumulation advisor you've had for the last 10 or 20 years isn't going to be the person you need to get you to this next phase of your life. So again, the class is seven hours in length. We teach them at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi Campus, and Oakland University. It's seven hours, 200-page textbook. Tuition is $29 to attend. During COVID, we have been streaming these classes live through the classroom into your own homes so that you can, in your own safety of your home, still get through that 200-page textbook with us. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. All matters discussed during this show are for informational purposes only. Opinions expressed are solely those of senior planning advisors and staff. All topics covered are believed to be from reliable sources. However, senior planning advisors makes no representations as to its accuracy or completeness. This shall in no way be construed as a solicitation to sell securities or investment advisory services to residents of any state other than Michigan or where otherwise permitted. Topics should be discussed with your individual advisor prior to implementation. Fee-based financial planning and investment advisory services offered through Strategic Investment Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Strategic Investment Advisors and Senior Planning Advisors are affiliated companies. This radio show is a paid placement.